Thank you, Speaker Dapp, for joining us. Can you begin by sharing with us your priorities for this session? Our priorities really are twofold. Number one, uh, we have a surplus uh, that we've had kind of continually now for four or five forecasts and, and our three or four forecasts. Uh, our priority is to give some, some of that money back to taxpayers. So do some significant tax relief, uh, really in a meaningful way, something that's going to make a difference in, in people's lives, both uh, Minnesota families, kind of middle class uh, tax relief, uh, and also uh, some tax relief that hopefully could spur some job growth in Minnesota, which really will provide better job opportunities and higher paying job opportunities for Minnesotans. Um, and then secondly, we want to tackle uh, transportation infrastructure funding. So. Uh, more specifically, putting some significant resources into our road and bridge infrastructure and really putting in place what I think will end up being uh, a 10-year plan that, that uh, will infuse those needed dollars into our road and bridge infrastructure. Would you like to see a dedicated fund set aside for transportation funds? Well, our plan takes uh, existing revenue sources that currently go into the general fund um, and, and reallocates them or dedicates them to the road and bridge fund. So more specifically, we take the uh, sales tax on auto parts, rental cars, and leased vehicles, and we set that money aside into the road and bridge fund and then spend it on our road and bridge infrastructure from there. Um, and we can do that right now because we have currently a surplus in our general fund and projected future surpluses. Uh, so we're, that surplus is projected to continue into the future. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to do that right now. And I'll remind uh, folks that, that road and bridge infrastructure is one of our kind of constitutionally defined core functions of state government, like education and public safety. So it really is a priority enough that, that our founding fathers put it in our state constitution. Um, and we should respect that and make sure that we take care of that first before we use surplus dollars and spend it on other things. Um, and we did pass a fully funded state budget last year uh, with about a 5% increase. That's, that's higher than some wanted. It's lower than others wanted, but it was a compromise that I think uh, fully funded our state government. So now with the surplus, we can look at giving it back to Minnesotans in a meaningful way um, and also investing a small part of it into our road and bridge infrastructure. And I think people broadly support that. How does a short session affect those priorities? Well, we will have to be much more focused having just a 10-week session. Um, obviously, the 10-week session was a result of the construction schedule at our, at our state capitol, um, which has been uh, closed for uh, the better part of a year now. And, uh, and, and the only thing that will be open in the state capitol this session is just the House chamber. So we will have public access. Um, we will not have our, our gallery, but we will set up some temporary galleries in the alcoves of the House chamber. So it's going to be a little bit different, but we'll still have public access. And, and uh, um, we will have that shorter session, uh, which will mean we'll need to be much more focused and uh, uh, probably want to kind of manage expectations that we might not be doing a lot of additional things. Um, we'll, we'll stick to the basics and make sure we get those done and do those well um, and, and make sure that we're, uh, we're representing those priorities, getting, getting those passed. And obviously with the Capitol closed, public access is going to be limited. So what would you want the public to know about how they can still have their input heard? Well, we will have that public viewing area in the alcoves, and, and actually it might be kind of interesting for the public to see that and to be there right, really right on the floor of the house as we're in session. Um, we probably will not have quite as much access for public, but we will try to uh, cycle people through. So if, if folks want to come, um, we'll, we'll hopefully have tickets available that people can get into that area. Uh, for people that can't get to the Capitol or uh, may want to watch from from the Senate, uh, the state office building across the street. Uh, we will have uh, one of our hearing rooms with a large screen set up for viewing of the of the sessions, and and we'll have pages set up that they can run messages over to members, uh, so that folks will still have uh, as much access as possible, and that they're not disrupted by um, the the construction that's going on. What has your caucus been doing in the interim, in preparation for a short session? You know, not necessarily. Um, I think what we are doing is trying to focus our priorities on uh, the issues that are most important, obviously the tax relief and the transportation that we talked about. Um, 
we, we have been, many of our committee chairs have been having pre-hearings um, discussing some of the things that, that they want to tackle and work on. Um, and I think there are opportunities to get many other things done, but uh, we want to kind of make sure that we manage expectations and that, that people don't think we're going to be here for six months and um, that we're going to have a lot of extra time. We want to make sure that people are focused and, and ready um, that when we start session on, on March 8th that we hit the ground running and, and uh, we're ready to kind of take up and act on those, those priorities. Um, and as things come up, you know, we'll be able to deal with them. For instance, we need to take action on uh, the, the real ID issue and we need to do that really twice during session is, is, is what I think will probably happen. Uh, first, and hopefully we can do this in the first week of session, uh, repeal the um, prohibition that exists in law that doesn't allow uh, the state of Minnesota to even pursue looking into uh, complying with Real ID. Um, and then secondly, we need to enact the Real ID legislation before the end of session. Um, so we're going to need to give some time between the repeal of the prohibition and the enactment of the language for the department to uh, look at some options and, and come back with some recommendations for us to have hearings and then pass that into law. Um, and, and we feel like the state of Minnesota needs to be issuing Real ID compliant driver's license by October of 2016. Um, and that's in an effort to uh, make sure that everyone can get their driver's license replaced in the normal course of expiration and replacement, um, which happens on a four-year cycle in Minnesota, by the final deadline of October of 2020. Um, so when you think about the, the real deadline, October of 2020 seems like a long time away, but um, we really need to be issuing those driver's licenses by October of this year. And that's going to be a, a, a tight schedule to get that all uh, debated, passed, and, and implemented um, in a way that ensures that people can get on an airplane um, and not have to worry about whether their ID will work or not. And, and Minnesotans are really concerned about that issue. So that's just one example of um, a, a bigger issue that we really do need to take up and pass this session. And two other issues that were talked about this year for a special session were unemployment benefits for Iron Range miners and racial disparities. Now you said that these issues could be dealt with in a regular session. How quickly do you think that could happen? The unemployment benefits or extending the unemployment benefits for uh, displaced uh, iron range uh, steel workers uh, is something that, that we believe is important. It's a priority. Uh, we hope to bring that bill up early in session. I, I anticipate it'll pass with pretty broad bipartisan support. Um, we think that's important. Um, the racial uh, inequity or disparity issue in the in the wages uh, is a little more difficult issue because there isn't an, an, an easy automatic solution to solve that problem. Uh, it took us many, many years to get here and it may take many years to get out of this situation, but we couldn't be more concerned about the severity of the issue. Um, but we also see a connection between um, the, the huge disparity in wages for the community of co communities of color in Minnesota um, and the fact that we have the highest achievement gap in the country. Um, so it's, it's really no wonder, considering that a minority student in the Minneapolis school district has less than a 50% chance of graduating from high school, that once they get out in the workforce, they're not making as much money um, as, as uh, you know, uh, Caucasian uh, the community in, 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 the same, in the same community. So it's, it's, uh, it's a problem that, that is a little, you know, to really solve it long term, we have to deal with closing the achievement gap and making sure that we're giving these kids absolutely the best opportunity to be successful and participate in a successful way in our, in our economy in Minnesota. So uh, it, may t it may take some years to solve this. There may be some things we can do um, as kind of stop gaps to help in the immediate uh, need, kind of like un extending the unemployment benefits. What, what rangers really want is a paycheck. So we need to figure out how we can have long-term sustainable job growth on the iron range. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I think they, you know, yes, they may need a, an unemployment check in the, in the meantime, but ultimately what they want is a paycheck. So there's a short-term solution and a long-term solution. And, and really we need to look at every problem we face in that way. With the upcoming elections, a lot hinges on this session. What do you think needs to get done so that Minnesotans keep House Republicans in the majority? It's, it's been interesting. You know, I took over as minority leader at a time, you know, right after the 2012 election when it really was a low point for my party. And I think 
you know, we had brought some of that on ourselves. We had lost the trust of Minnesotans. Um, so when I took over, uh, you know, I, th I think my, my election also was maybe a little bit of a fluke in that I was so new. I, you know, I took over just with two years experience and um, that hadn't happened in, I think, over a hundred years in Minnesota. So, um, and now I'm the, th the first third term speaker since the 1930s. Um, you know, I very often joke that uh, there's some good and bad that goes with that. The, the, the bad is I don't have the institutional knowledge of this place. And the good, frankly, is I don't have the institutional <laughs> knowledge of this place. So we can think outside the box. We can do things differently. I, I very much have a, a, a mind and a, a, a brain that is, um, wants to solve problems and, and find solutions for problems. And I think, frankly, Minnesota is served better if we stick to the issues and don't get into the name calling. I think that's what people hate about what we do. Um, but if we stick to the issues and really talk about why we think our ideas are better solutions for the problems that Minnesotans face, um, I think our ideas are better. And I think Minnesotans have seen um, in the last year that we've been in the majority that, that frankly we came to lead and I think we've, we've won the trust back of Minnesotans. If we can accomplish uh, some, some tax relief that I think is significant um, and, and meaningful for Minnesotans, middle class Minnesotans, and, and if we can uh, put some money into roads and bridges which is broadly supported uh, all across the state, I think people will call this a very successful session and, and everything that we do because of the current makeup has to be bipartisan. So I think we've shown we can work across the aisle and we can get things done. And if we, if we do that, um, I think Minnesotans will see uh, that we deserve to be reelected. And, and I don't expect anybody to vote for anybody because of their po particular political party. I think they should vote for the people who are showing results and, and getting things done and, and, and doing what's right first and foremost, and, and that's, that's where we've set our priorities. And frankly, uh, the, the, the quality of members and candidates that we have stepping forward to run, um, I think they're really talented people. And when I go out and recruit candidates, I don't just look for good candidates, I look for people who will be incredibly good members. And I think that's what we need. We need a, a broad representation of backgrounds and, and diversity at the Capitol from different perspectives to, to you know, and, and, and different expertise to come um, and really dig in and solve these problems. And, and maybe people only serve for a short time, but you know what, we need people that are really, uh, have a heart for service and, 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 uh, and, and really uh, want to dig in and do what's right for Minnesotans and solve some of these problems. And I think we've shown that we're, we're doing that. Um, so I think we deserve re-election, but ultimately it's gonna be up to Minnesotans.